Can Ella Fitzgerald tell whether Gee. Tom Waits and Ricky Lee Jones' rendition of Edward Albee's zoo story uh, is live or on Memorex video yeah. cassette tapes? Okay. I said, have you been to the zoo? One more time, baby. I said, have you been to the mm -hmm. zoo? You're talking to me, right? Memorex video cassette tapes made with the finest Filipino mylar money can buy. I said, uh, man, have you been to I've, the zoo? I've been to the zoo. I've been to the zoo. I said, have you... It's been really fine working with you. Hey, too much. <laughs> That's live. <laughs> That's live. <laughs> That's tape. <laughs> That's live. <laughs> That's live. <laughs> That's... That's... On tape. That's live. <laughs> Mamorex video cassette tapes. So real, even Ella Fitzgerald can't tell. Tired of ordinary television? Don't touch that dial. SCTV is now on the air. Starring Joe Flaherty. Eugene Levy. Andrea Martin. like you've never seen it before. This is the SCTV Television Network. SCTV now begins its programming day with Sunrise Semester. Today's topic, basic photography with Edith Prickley. Hey. Oh, hello. Just loading my camera. Well, today we're going to learn the technique behind great passport photography. Why do they always have to make you look so damn ugly? I always end up looking like Ma Kettle. <laughs> well, I'm here to tell you you can look glamorous as well as official. You just have to follow the easy prickly formula. In a moment, I'm going to be using my cousin Shirley as a model. She's planning a trip to London on one of those cheap Laker flights. Of course, she has to bring her own tuna sandwich. <laughs> so I said to her, Cheryl, I'll save you a few bucks, make you look gorgeous. We'll have a party at the same time. <laughs> here we go. What makes this passport picture look so damn good? It's not the camera, it's not the light, it's not even the puss on this little gal. It's the mood the photographer creates. And that's the secret of all those high fashion photographers. Scabulo, Avedon, Karsh, and now Prickly. <laughs> they know how to relax their models by creating the perfect mood. So why don't we begin with the beginning? <laughs> My cousin Shirley. Hello, Edith. <laughs> Loosen up, honey. It's a passport picture, not a morgue shot. <laughs> See, you got a head start in the Chablis. Well, I did. <laughs> Finish the bottle. Don't mind if I do, Edith. <laughs> That's number one. Relax your subject with a good, stiff drink. Then you're ready to be used. Now, number two is music. Not just any kind of music. We're talking mood music. We're talking music with a beat. We're talking music you can move to. We're talking bar talk. <gasps> Roll it, boys. I hear it. I got it. I got it. Get moving, Nate. Get moving. Go, Shirley. Go, Shirley. Go, Shirley. Yeah. Here we go, Shirley. Start. Start it, baby. Go, Shirley. Stop it, Nate. Stop it. Down, Shirley. Down, Shirley. Whip those lips, Shirley. There we go. There we go, Nate. It happened. Look at me, Shirley. Look at me, Shirley. Look at me, Shirley. Here we go. There we go. We've got it down there, down there, up there, go! <laughs> the important thing is to always keep your model moving so she stays alert. Now for some close-up. Let me look at you, sweetheart. Do you fall into a bucket of chalk or am I going blind? <laughs> <laughs> we got to help that little mug along with a little mood lighting. We're talking umbrella light. <laughs> Shirley? Here we are, Shirley, here we are. Alan Bates is on you, Shirley. He loves you, he loves you. He's coming in, he's coming in, Shirley. He's coming in, do it, do it. You're gorgeous, you're beautiful, you're beautiful. We got it. Now for number three. The prickly formula, the piastre de resistance, the secret of all those top fashion photographers. Bring it in, boys, and turn it on. <laughs> Here we are. Scavulo, eat your heart out. <laughs> so, what 
did you learn today on the prickly formula? WMF. Wine, music, fan. Your ticket to perfect passport pictures. Where'd you hear it from? You heard it from prickly. Next week, we're going to learn how to take candid shots of the hubby at home. Playgirls offering $50 a pick. So tune in, you could get rich. Bye now from the eyes of Edith Prickly. You throw with that seed of... Yes, I am, honey. <laughs> you are hot out there. Lauren Hutton. <laughs> Everybody's favorite talk show producer is back, this time with his own show. <laughs> Bobby, um, where are you going to be appearing next week? Where, where are you going to be appearing next week? Oh, I'll be at home, my man. Every week, the finest and the funniest from Hollywood go head-to-head -head with the talk show king. And, uh, Bubbles, where will you be appearing uh, next week? I'm sorry for you, Kenny. I, I said, where will you be appearing, Bubbles? Oh, appearing? Next oh. week. <laughs> oh, I'll be at um, Carnegie Hall, and then after that, I'm going to be down at Caesar's Palace. <laughs> <laughs> I say that's funny. <laughs> well, that's all the time we have for tonight. Uh, thanks for stopping by. Dear. Thanks for stopping by. Oh. All right. <laughs> oh, this is good. This is good. The Freddie de Cordova Show, Thursday at 9 on SCTV. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Guy Caballero. Caballero's the name. Owning SCTV's the game. <laughs> I'm owner and president. Don't you ever forget it. Ladies and gentlemen, we're proud to be presenting uh, fine programming to you via the SCTV satellite. That's right. We feel our satellite's the best in the whole world, and we're bringing you programming from all over the world. And tonight is no exception. Tonight, we're bringing to you live from Turkey. <laughs> That's right, Turkey. <laughs> The, the small, the great country of Turkey. It's not that small. It's a wonderful country. It's beaming up a show to us, and we're bringing you a show from Turkey. It's presented from our uh, sister station there. Uh, it's from Istanbul. I think it's called ITV. But it's, bring, it's a wonderful program, and it's got music and laughs and Turks and everything you'd ever want in a show. And uh, all we need is money from you to keep this satellite up in the air. And I'd appreciate it if you could start sending money in, because we need it desperately. Uh, let's, we're talking not peanuts here, but we're talking $10,000 per person. That's right. We need a lot of money. 10000 isn't that much. Believe me, you'd probably just be buying a couple of cars with it or something. So why don't you put it to good use and see these fine programs? We've got one coming from uh, Quimoy and Matsu. Uh, they band it together. Next week, we'll have that on. But only if you can send in that money. $10,000 a person. It's not asking too much. Please. Now, for that fine program from Turkey, with music and laughs and Turks galore. And it's not going to be a turkey, either. You're probably thinking that out there, aren't you? Well, it's not. <laughs> They have strange laws over here, strange customs. I don't want you getting us into any trouble. Oh, you don't have to worry about me, Buzz. There, you can't fool around over here. I won't fool around. I don't want you talking to any stranger. Don't worry about me. I won't talk to anybody. I don't even know any strangers. Well, just make sure you don't. My lips are sealed. I won't say a word. Not a word. Remember that. All right, I'll remember. I promise. Hey, man. Yes, sir. Can I help you? Can you take this package for me? Uh, I'm overweight to bag. It's, uh, it's a cake for my grandmother. You're giving a cake for your grandmother? Well, all right, but I can't say anything to anybody, so don't talk to me. Thanks, man. Hey, don't say nothing to me. I won't say nothing to you. My friend Buzz thinks I haven't got any brains, but I've got brains I haven't even used yet. Don't let it go to your head. All right. Hey, where'd you get that package? Oh, a fella gave it to me. What fella? This fella right behind There's me. There's nobody there. Well, he, he was here a minute ago. Didn't I tell you not to talk to anybody? Oh, honest, Buzz, I didn't say anything to anybody. He just gave me this cake to give to his grandmother. You, what's in the box? I'm sorry, I can't talk to anybody. Answer the man. I said, what's in the box? This, uh, this fellow behind me just gave me a cake to give to his dear grandmother. Open the box. You want me to open up somebody else's box? I don't think so. Open the box for the man. I was just going to. Oh, must be a small granny, Buzz. Look at the size of these cakes. This is hashish. Hashish. Hashish? What's the matter with you? Trying to smuggle dope across the border? Who's this? This is my friend, Buzz. I've never seen this man before in my life. <laughs> You're both under arrest. 
sees them, sees them, I see them, he's right here. Cut it out, we're in enough trouble already. Get oh, great. You know, Lou and I were thrilled when they asked us to host the Midnight Express special here in Istanbul. Now, Lou, this is your first trip to Europe, isn't it? Yes, it is, but... You like turkey? Oh, you know me, I love turkey. I love turkey with stuffing and gravy on the side. I love... Turkey, it. turkey, the country. Well, I wouldn't call it a turkey, Buzz. We've only been here a couple oh, of minutes. Oh, cut it out. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we've got a great show for you tonight. Our first group is making their big comeback on the show tonight. So, Lou, why don't you introduce the band? You want me to introduce the band? That's right. All right, I'll introduce the band. What band? The band. What's the name of the band? I'm telling you, man, the band. Well, who's the band? No, no, no. Who's on next week? What are you asking me for? I'm not asking you. I'm telling you. Who's on next week? Well, what do I care who's on next week? If I'm going to introduce the band tonight, i got to know their name. That is their name. That's whose name? The band. What's the matter with you? Look, are you the fellow who booked the band? That's right. Well, who's the band? Who's on next week? That's what I'm trying to find out. Well, I'm telling you. Look, have you signed a contract with the band? That's right. Was well, the band's name on it? Absolutely. Well, it's no good unless they sign it. It's no good unless who signed it? The band. Well, who signed it? Who's on next week? I don't care who on next week. I gotta know the end of the band that's on tonight. Are you listening to me? The band is on tonight. Who's on next week? You follow me? Yes. No, no. Yes said no. They were booked. <laughs> who's booked? Didn't I just say who's on next week? Yes. No, no, no. They're booked. <laughs> who's booked? Yes. Look, let me get this straight. Yes is booked. Who's on next week? And the band is on tonight? Now, that's the first sensible thing you've said. I don't even know what I'm talking about. And frankly, I don't give a darn because this is for the birds. What did you just say? I said this is for the birds. Ah, they broke up long ago. <laughs> now, look, forget the band. They probably packed up and gone home by now. You took so long. Well, I don't blame them. A band without a name is certainly not going to go anywhere. Just introduce John Denver. John Denver? Well, at least he's got a name. Here's John Denver. <laughs> <laughs> That'll teach him. And let that be a lesson to all you kids. When you travel over here, keep your dope at home. Because when you get busted for dope over here, you're in for the hassle of your life. Right, you, Sam? Yeah, hassle, hassle. <laughs> all right. Now, here's a lady who begged us to bring her over here to Turkey just so she could get out of Canada. Here's Ann Murray. <laughs> A lot, I think. She packed me a lunch. She gave me a whole bunch of chocolate bars. Chocolate bars? You didn't mention anything about chocolate bars. What are you hiding them from me? No, oh, Hillary gave them to me, not you. Well, isn't that a fine remark coming from you? Me, your lifelong pal, your bosom buddy, and you won't give me a chocolate bar. I'm sorry, Buzz. I didn't mean it that way. Of course you meant it that way. After all I've done for you. When we were five months behind in our rent, who did I let pay the rent? Me. You. Nice of you then. And when I got a ticket for speeding and I couldn't afford the ticket, who went to jail? Me. You. Always thinking of yourself. I forget things so fast. I've been bad. Ooh. You're a bad boy, all right. Look, Buzz, wh why don't you have the rest of the bar, Buzz? Well, I only took a bite out of it. You can have it all. That's more like it. It's good, huh? Say, this isn't chocolate, Lou. What do you mean this isn't chocolate? Well, if this isn't chocolate, then... You know, don't say it. Don't say that word. Lou, this is hashish. This is hashish? I told you not to say that word, didn't I? What's the matter with you? It's a fine way to carry it. I can let go of my coat. I just ate two bars. You just ate a doll, for heaven's sake. Ladies and gentlemen... Stop! You show people! All right, from Istanbul, Turkey, the Midnight Express special has reached its destination. 
We want to thank all of you for having been aboard this evening. And now, a special good night from our extra special hosts, Abbott and Costello. Well, Lou, I hope you're happy. Thanks to me, we're finally getting out of here. Well, I gotta hand it to you, Buzz. It was certainly smooth the way you talked to that guard, giving him all my money like that. What are you eating? Well, I've had this real appetite ever since I had those two chocolate bars. Put it away. You trying to get us into trouble again? All right. Don't worry. I won't say a word to anybody well, no more. Well, make sure you don't. Shut up. I didn't say anything. Well, that's just in case you do. Mm -hmm. Excuse me? Is this the line for flight 357? It is? Oh, have you been waiting long? Say, you're kind of cute. Oh, what, Pat, but your tongue? <laughs> Listen, why don't you save the seat on the plane for you and me? Oh, by the way, would you mind carrying this parcel for me while I go and powder my nose? Thanks, <laughs> Hey, what are you doing with that package? The lady behind me just gave it to well, me. Well, put it away. Well, you take it, bud, please. I don't want it. I don't want it. it. Don't worry, Buzz. It's just more of those chocolate bars that Hillary gave Get this way, please. I did it again, Buzz. You certainly did. Okay, watch the jacket. Watch the jacket. You get over here. What's the matter with you? Don't give these guys a hard time. I'm not. They're giving me a hard time. They're just doing their job. I'll give them a job. All right. When did you get the hashish? I don't know anything about any hashish. Ah. Well, maybe this will refresh your memory. That doesn't scare me. No, huh? Then how about this? <laughs> Why don't you go fly a kite? <laughs> go fly a kite, huh? Go fly a kite, huh? Fly a kite! <laughs> Maybe the small fat one knows something. <laughs> Maybe he does, huh? <laughs> Maybe the small fat one knows something, huh? All right. Where did you get the hashes? Would you mind just waiting for one minute, please? Get ready, Buzz. Why don't you go fly a kite? Ah! Inspector, I found this woman in the washroom attempting to hide some ashes. Ah, so she's the one, huh? Get out. Whoa. Now's our chance to get out. Come on, let's go. <laughs> yeah. 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 Take it away. Dog. Well, Lou, I hope you learned your lesson. I certainly did, Buzz. When you mess around with dope over here... You're in for the hassle of your life. Say good night. Good night, everyone. Good night, everybody. Bringing a disaster theme to the talk show scene. It's the Irwin Allen Show. With special guest, Shelly Winter. Red Button. That's the closest I ever came to getting a roast in this business. And Charlton Heston. It's a remarkable film, actually. The Irwin Allen Show. Watch out for it. Stay tuned for statewide news with Christopher Lydon and Gail Harris next on Channel 57.
Hey, Casanova, how's it going with Myrna? Lousy. I can't even get her to talk to me. And don't tell me it's my breath, because I already tried that mouthwash like you told me. Hey, Mr. Voice of Gloom, come on with me. You see, Ralph, your mouth breath might be fine, but maybe your nose breath is offending people. Nose breath? You see, nose hair stopped you so much, but a certain amount of offensive nasal breath still gets through. That's why I start off each day with Nasex Nasal Spray. One shot of Nasex, and I'm protected for the whole day. Nasex? Mind if I try some? Hey, Romeo, looks like you and Murder are grooving now. Thanks to you and Nasex. <laughs> Nasex Nasal Spray, also available at Roll-On. Tired of ordinary television? Don't touch that dial. FCTV is now on the air. Starring Joe Flaherty. Eugene Levy, Andrea Martin, Rick Moranis, Dave Thomas, featuring Robin Duke and Tony Rosato. Television like you've never seen it before. This is the FCTV Television Network. And disasters in the home. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Disasters in the Home. Today, we're going to show you what to do when you run into one of those little household fires. And demonstrating with me today is a neighbor of mine. I've asked her to join me. She's a hell of a gal. She's never been on television before. And I'd like you to welcome her, Miss Wendy Longsborough. <gasps> Hello, Wendy. Hi. You nervous, dear? Well, yes, I am. <laughs> well, just loosen up, honey. This is your big chance. <laughs> <laughs> All right, tell everybody what you do at home. Well, I'm a housewife and I decorate cakes part-time. What the hell are you looking at, Wendy? They're not going to get any bigger. <laughs> Good gracious, dear. Let me ask you something. Have you ever had a fire in the home? Yes. Did you know how to handle it? No, I didn't. I bet you didn't, Wendy, and that's why you're here, so we can both learn how. All right, Wendy, could you hand me the wastebasket, please? This one here? You see another one, dear? <laughs> you can put it down, sweetie. Good Lord, dear, you've been baking brownies too long. <laughs> I should ask, what are you putting them? <laughs> all right, honey, listen. You smoke, don't you? Yes, you know, I do. Yeah, all right. I don't mean the killer weed. <laughs> all right. Has this ever happened to you, Wendy? You have an ashtray full of butts, right? You empty them in the waste paper basket. There you go, little house cleaning. You go away, you answer the phone. And an hour later, you come back, and there's a raging campfire going on. <laughs> Good Lord, we haven't got all day. Butch. Thanks, dear. <laughs> He's a good one, isn't he? There we go. What the hell's happening there? <laughs> come on, baby. Come on, baby, light my fire. <laughs> what do you think, Wendy? Oh, I think that's started. You sure? Yeah, yes, right. I think that's okay. There we go. There you go, Butch. <laughs> Anybody got a wiener they can spare? <laughs> <laughs> All right, rule number one, folks, don't panic. That's the trouble with most people. There it goes, there it goes. <laughs> they find themselves in a situation like this and they lose control. <laughs> uh, don't you think we ought to do something, Edith? Of course, we're going to do something. Yep. As if hot in here, am I going through my chain? <laughs> Peter, we should do something. We're going to do something, but first I'm going to tell Coach Heath I won't be home for dinner. <laughs> Edith! Whoa! Did you knocked it over! Didn't I, dear? Edith is getting out of control. Are you sure? It's an inferno! It's an inferno! It is an inferno, and a pretty small one at that. Whoa! It's incredible! We'll see you later. Well, that's one way to handle a fire. Call the fire department. You know, we're just about out of time right now, but next week we're going to be bringing in a real disaster. My hobby. 
<laughs> Until then, if you run into Smokey the Bear, tell him I'm out. <laughs> Goodbye. Oh, Lord, that was quite a fire. Fire? Yeah. Oh! Awesome! And now, ladies and gentlemen, Cookery Croc. And here's your host, Angus Croc. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, too. And welcome to Cookery Croc. Now, most of you know me as Angus Croc, the famous blues singer. Here's a couple of my albums right here. Edinburgh Man, sold over 2,000 copies in Scotland alone. And, of course, Blues from the Highland. A classic in its own time. Sold more copies with that album than Slim Whitman ever sold. But on Cookery Croc, you're going to be getting a chance to see Angus Croc, the gourmet chef, huh? What a... Ah! Ooh! Ah! Ooh! Oh! these things on. Anyway, we're going to be working on meals that you can prepare in your own home for next to nothing. Like this lovely casserole here that I showed you yesterday. A beautiful meal that will let you feed a family of four for only 98 cents. But before I go a step further, I'd like to bring out today's special guest. Gregory Peck as Dr. Joseph Mengele from the movie The Boys from Brazil. Gregory Peck. Greg or Dr. Mengele, I guess I should say, it's a great pleasure to have you here on the show. That casserole is brown. What, this one here? Yes. I, I know, I know. I, I, I cooked it yesterday. I prefer it would be blue. <laughs> we could put some blueberries in it or something. That eh? won't be necessary. I'll take care of it myself. Oh, good grief. <laughs> what are you doing there? There. That's better, isn't it? Huh. Isn't it? Something is different anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Kill him! What? Just hit. Oh! <laughs> ah, you're quite a joker. Yeah. The dogs. What? The dogs? The dogs? <laughs> Boy, I don't know who invited those dogs on this show. It suddenly wasn't me. Anyway, Dr. Joseph Mengele, ladies and gentlemen. I was hoping he'd stay a wee bit longer, but, oh, well, on with the show, eh? Now, oh, today we're going to be showing you how to cook scones. Not the kind you get in lousy restaurants, either. I took a liberty of going out and getting some crappy ones to cook. <laughs> look, gee, look, this is not good food. Take a wee bite and... <laughs> it's like crap! Anyway, that's not the kind. We're going to be making the real homemade scones that'll melt in your mouth. Now... I'm going to need someone from the audience to help me out. A wee bit of assistance, eh? How about, um... Oh, how about you, dear? Hmm? Hey. No, not the fat lady. The wee cute thing beside her. What, is she a daughter or something? Yeah, you come... Yeah, come right up here. Ah, oh, so good to have you on the show. What's your name? Laurie Anderson. Laurie Anderson. Isn't she a wee bonny thing, huh? Hey, I must say. Now, how old would you be, Laurie? Oh, I'm 15. Fifteen, just my age. <laughs> I'm fifteen myself. <laughs> just kidding, you know. Hey, well, okay, now, <clears throat> what we're going to be doing, Lori, and I want to show you so you can help me, we'll get rid of this Mengele casserole here, and uh, we're going to be kneading this dough. So we'll just split it up into two parts here. You take your part. Oh, that feels good, doesn't it? Hey, <laughs> just need a wee bit of that dough. <laughs> okay, now... What we're going to be doing is, you're going to be making scones with raisins, and I'm going to be making them without. What you might do is give your uh, guests a wee bit of a choice there. Uh, you, how's that? Is it? Uh, have you got it there? You, is it fun? Yeah? Is it fun? <laughs> now, here's what you do, you cute wee thing. You're a doll, you know that? I like to have good guests on my show. Just take a few of these wee raisins like that and poke them in. Take a wee bit like this. This is going to be your scone. And poke some raisins in there. As I was saying, I like to give my guests a choice. I have a friend who likes scones, but he hates raisins. So I make them both ways, with raisins and without. You having fun, dear? <laughs> okay. Well, you put too many raisins in there. Now that's going to make them sick. Take some of those out. Yeah. Just a few of them out. Yeah. And put the rest in. You see, you got a big... Now there's a big hole there. Oh, yeah. Poke that right in the hole. Isn't that good, huh? <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, we got to get moving along here, so, uh, all right, off with you. Okay, now, um, we'll just put these in a pan. 
like that. We've got two with and without. Here's one here. We'll put a couple more raisins in that, like that. <laughs> and the final touch, I love to add just an ounce of scotch to the scones before placing them in the oven. It adds a certain flavor. So we'll go over here to the old bottle, eh? <laughs> and uh, we'll just add one ounce. My hands are all slippery from that <laughs> damn flower. Can't get the top off. <laughs> oh, here we are. I should be doing my exercises, eh? <laughs> okay, we're going to add just an ounce now. No more, no less. Oh, put in a wee bit too much. Well, I'll just drain that off. <laughs> oh, I drank too much. It's going to be one ounce exactly. I'll just take a wee bit more. There we are. Oh, wouldn't you know it? I put too much in again. All right. <laughs> uh, ah, well, well. Thing is low again. I'll tell you what, I'll just have to make it. Mm. And uh, there we go. Now, see, overfilled it again. So this time I'll just save a wee bit in the bottom. Okay, one good ounce of scotch, eh? Mm. Oh. And an ounce for the ship. I always say, when you're going to make scones, you might as well be happy, huh? So, Ooh. take an ounce for myself. And uh, you take this and uh, you, you just put it in the oven, you know? Did I put scotch in this or not? Ah. <laughs> be on the safe side, eh? There we go. That's good and some for me. <laughs> oh, yeah. Right, okay, so put it in the oven. Take about ten minutes before, and... Um, and while they're cooking, uh, perhaps we should bring out my fellows here that are in my blues band and uh, do a wee bit of a blues song for you, eh? On my far right and heart, Gordon Sonny Boy McPherson. <laughs> and the cute young lad on guitar is none other than Lightning Sam McGregor. <laughs> oh, that's really bad, eh? <laughs> well, I hope my pipes are in good shape today, boys. One, two, three! Four! <laughs> about it one day, I don't know. Anyway, we've run out of time, so until next week, this is Angus Crook saying, Bob's your uncle. Bye, good riddance to you. Fat talking Scottish blues. Give me one, give me two, give me three, give me five pound notes. Give me six, give me ten, give me twenty. Twenty, Bob. Great, twenty, Bob, and a hot job. Tonight on SCTV, Quincy Cartoon Corner, with special guest, Tweety Bird. Okay, go. Do it. Leave? No, do the, do the song. Oh, gee. Good day. Good day. Good one, eh? You didn't expect that, eh? He's loaded. Okay. Change, right? Good day. Welcome to the Great White North Canyon Quarter. I'm Bob McKenzie. It's my brother Doug. We've How's got, it going, eh? We got a real big show. Because yeah. This week's we got. So a, hurry up, eh? At home, we, watch quick. We got a topic, but it's like really more than one topic because it's it's on stuff that really bugs us, right? And but like more than one stuff bugs us, so yeah. it's really more than one topic. Anyway, we I made a list here. What really bugs me is people that honk at you when you stop to look at an accident. Right? Yeah. I, that bugs me too. Okay. Even if I'm not driving, like, and the thing is, that if if you look in your rearview mirror, someone will be honking at them because they'll stop right after you. 
<laughs> right. Okay. Uh, another thing that bugs me is uh, when, well, when we go to uh, uh, Canadian Tire. Yeah. Um, like the lineup at the express counter is always uh, longer than at the other um, counters, right? And so if it's an express counter, right, why is the lineup longer? Yeah, and like, okay, so if you got eight items or less, eh? So how come a, a six pack of pop or something co co counts as one item? Right, it should be six, right? Yeah, okay. And, and then, like, if you're in the line and you got eight items, perfect number, eh? And you pick up a TV guide, they'll boot you out of the line, eh? And send you to another line. Sure enough, it got longer with a bunch of fat ladies with their groceries, eh? Pretty cozy. Well, I don't know about that. Anyway, um, so those are some of the things that bug us. Then we <laughs> You forgot to tell them about other stuff, eh, that we get at CTC, Canadian Tire, eh? Like, we are going there one time to get a pail, like... Hurry up. Just an ordinary pail, like, to wash our feet, eh? And we're out of time. It. What? We're out of time. So, good day. Coming to SCTV. Sissy musician, bum! A compelling film with Eugene Fedor and Joan Crawford. Nice fingers, Mr. Beret. But what else can they do? <laughs> and now you come traipsing in here with your high society fashions and your big shoulders. Mom, well, we both know I'm no good for your son, but I can't help myself. New York Rhapsody, coming soon. <laughs> Not a drug overdose. Looks like it. When will these ducks ever learn? <laughs> All right, Sam. Get him out of here. All right, Quince. Come on, boy. Got another one, Quince. Oh, yeah, Sylvester's his name. Cause of death? Natural causes. Natural causes? You've got to be kidding. Look. He's over ten feet long and he's flatter than a pancake. Somebody's kidding somebody. Sam, prepare for an autopsy. Oh, Quince, it's all in the report. Leave it alone, huh? Well, look, I don't buy that report. I got a hunch there's more to this case than meets the eye, and I'm going to prove it. <laughs> Scalpel. Thanks, Sam. <laughs> Just as I thought. Extreme compression on the tissue and on the bone structure. He was run over by a bulldozer. <laughs> ah, not quite, Sam. Still doesn't explain everything. That's uh, the wood marks, all those powder burns, all the slice marks, the adhesions. Just doesn't make sense. Why don't you leave it alone, Quince? We're backlogged with cases as it is. Boss, I got a hunch. A hunch that that cat did not die by the weight of that bulldozer alone. And all I need 24 hours to prove my point. And if you're going to sit back on your duff, I'm going to go out and do it myself. All right, Quince. You got your 24 hours. But that's it. Boss, I could kiss you. <laughs> Tweety, you're not leveling with me. Come on, Spike. Just level with me. Okay. All I did was chase after him as fast as I could, and then I bit off his tail. Uh, yeah, yeah? This, of course, tore the fur completely off his body, leaving him naked except for some stubble. Uh, come on, Spike. You've got to be more than that. No, no. That's all that happened. I swear it. Oh, then he ran over to the bread factory over there. Of course, the bread factory. Ah, oh, Spike, I can kiss you. You got proof, Quincy. Let's hear it. Proof? I'll give you all the proof you need. Here's what happened. Now look, Sylvester was chasing Tweety down the street. He trapped him right at the bottom of a tree. And Tweety went right up the tree. And Sylvester went right up after him. He got him out of the branch. He took the hood out of the branch right after him. And then the branch let loose. Sylvester went straight down. And the branch ran on top of his head. It just landed right on top of his head. All the splinters went in his head. And that's how I got those splinters. But right after that, Tweety went up to him and he stuck some dynamite right in his ear. He took about four pieces of dynamite. Boom. He blew him in 27 pieces. So he had to be stitched up. But that didn't kill him yet either. And what happened after that was, he started chasing Tweety. They chased Tweety right into Spike's mouth. 
He ran his bike's mouth. His bike was in there. He was running outside of his mouth. He chased Tweety right outside, and his bike's on. And he grabbed his tail with his teeth. He bit down like that. He started swinging him around and around and around. Then he started fighting like that. You can see stars and a big cloud of dust. And now all of the fur came off of him. He lost all of his fur. So Mr. lost every bit of fur, and he was bald. He was running around bald. But that didn't do him yet. So after that, Spike saw him. He chased him right down the street into a bread factory. He chased him into a bread factory. And then he went for him, and he missed him. So Mr. jumped up, and he landed in one of those tomato belts. And it sliced him up like bread. 20 slices. Just like that. 20 clean slices. And then it put a cellophane over him. He came out looking like a loaf of bread. But that didn't kill him yet either. So then they put him on a delivery truck and they delivered him. Where to? Right to Spike's house. He took him to Spike's house. Spike opened up the door. He went, ah. He saw some veterans that are chasing him. He chased him all the way up to a cliff. And he went after him and then Spike stopped. Sylvester kept going. He went out about 20 feet like this. He's running straight like that. He looks down. He sees he's up in midair. He's got about 900 feet to go. He goes straight down, lands on a highway. A steam roller's coming along, spreads right over him, and flies him out like a pancake. And that's what did him in. Except for one thing. I've seen cats go through a lot more than that. And they're, they're never killed. Young cats like Sylvester. Young? Sylvester was 97 years old. 97 years old? Then he did die of natural cause. Gee! for Mr. Quincy. Thanks, I... Stay tuned for statewide news with Christopher Lydon and Gail Harris next on Channel 57. What's this remind you of? Rodan's the thinker? Well, that's pretty good. Here he is on one of his breaks. <laughs> no. You know what these two people are doing? They're mating. In that old voodoo I call love, I could stay awake, but what would I do? The Mating. That's the name of the show, and that's the name of the act. We want you to stay tuned a little later on. I'm going to be the hostess, Edith Prickly. Da 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 dum bum ba da da. You know about the mating game, don't you? One lucky little gal gets to take home one appreciative male, and if the other two guys aren't doing anything, I get to take them home. A menage a trois. Hopefully, when Savvy isn't there. That's my husband, Mr. Prickly. <laughs> Goodbye. Tired of ordinary television? Don't touch that dial. FCTV is now on the air. Starring Joe Flaherty. Eugene Levy. Andrea Martin. Like you've never seen it before. This is the FCTV Television Network. Thursday at 9, join Bill Needle as he interviews new young stars whose careers are just beginning to take off. It's called Starting Out, and it's brand new on SCTV. Everything's just kind of phoned together, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Big, bright future ahead for you. Incredible. I can't believe all the offers that are coming in. They're flooding in, I'll bet. Flooding in is a good term. Yeah, yeah. Listen, let me ask you this. Now, you got a lot of TV offers, right? Oh, yes, sir. And you got movie offers. Movies are galore. And I hear there's an album deal in the in the works. Possibly. We're still discussing I'm not allowed to mention it on So how are you going to do do all this. <laughs> well, I've got my agent handling it. He's sure. kind of taking care of my career, kind of guiding me to work. So you leave it up to him, do you? Oh, very much so. His yeah, yeah. Well, he's going to make some choices for you then, Oh, right? he's got it. He's got it. He's going to uh, turn some things down, right? Unfortunately, we're probably going to have to. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing is, you never know whether you're turning the right thing down. That's the That's damn true. thing That's about this business. you got to be business. careful. But I'm confident with my agent. Well, I don't think you can be too confident in that area. You know, you make the wrong choice, and then you got to live with it for the rest of your life. 
I've seen this happen to young guys like yourself a million times where I don't know. You're, you're on the top, you're riding the crest of a wave, you've got offers flooding in, you make the wrong choice and you let the big one go and you take that little sucker, it dies out, fizzles right out, and the next thing you're left with nothing. High and dry with no career, no job, no nothing. You won't even be able to get a job knocking on the door as an extra. Yes, it's Bill Needle with his years of show business expertise, letting young people have the benefit of his experience. Same opportunities, he had to choose between a movie or some little weaselly play. He opted for the play. The next thing you know, the movie took off, the play went nowhere and took him with it. And then they found him, I don't know, it was about a year later, he was found nude in a bathtub, dead as a doornail. He'd taken 200 Davrons or something. God, it's awful. Just awful. You got, you got a phone I could use here? Well, You'll be, be giving them the advice they need today to make them the stars of tomorrow. I've seen your face on virtually every magazine cover over the last year, and uh, it's shocking that somebody would get that much coverage. Well, you know, it's... They it's, touch it up, though, don't they? No, they don't touch they it. They airbrush those photos. There's some airbrushing done. Oh, it's yeah, they must. Up. Well, let me get a closer look at you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you look, uh... You don't look as good here as you did on those magazines. There's much more lines here. How old are you now? Well, I'm, I'm 26. 26? Right yes. Kind yes. of a late bloomer as a model, were you? No, I, I, no not really. I... I'll tell you something. After 16, it's all downhill. My phys ed teacher told me that. But I'll tell you something. Here's where it starts happening, right in here. You start to get bags under the eyes, and then, of course, the cheeks go. And there's no way of holding them up. I mean, uh, unless you tuck them in or something, and then you get those lines around your neck. Oh, that becomes hideous. I don't even like to look at that kind of stuff. I'll tell you, the thing about relying on your looks is that you're going to have a short career. And my prediction for you is maybe six months, maybe a year tops. After that, cosmetic surgery, and then you're running the risk of having a face like a Congo drum. <laughs> Pull that skin back so tight, boy. You can see your face in your own skin. <laughs> what, are you, what are you crying about? Oh, here, take this. Don't miss it. Starting out with Bill Needle, Thursdays at 9 on SCTV. Get off my show. Gigantic discovery at Mount Palomar Observatory. Melonville man almost spends the night in jail. Almost. Can't wait for that story. Yeah. These stories and others tonight at 6 o'clock on SCTV News. Good day. Welcome to Canadian Corner to Great White North. And look at this. I'm Bob McKenzie, and this is my brother Doug, and uh, this is Doug's new beer bottle. Look. Oh, take off, eh? <laughs> it's got <a> baby bottle. <laughs> Although it's not bad, eh? It's like a condensed version of a Saturday night. You have a little beer and a little of this. Look at him, eh? He's loaded. Okay, today we're going to talk about our topic, and uh, the topic is uh, why the parking lots are so small. <laughs> I'm having a beer shower here, eh? Oh, gee. This little oh, sucker. That won't be the first time. Okay, what's the topic? The topic is why are parking lots so small at donut places, okay? Yeah. Like... Oh. Oh, way to go. my eye, eh? Anyway, so like the last night we were at Donut World, and like, it's got like 20 tables, eh? But it only has like um, eight spots in front, right? So like, we got there and there was no place to put the van, right? So, you know what he did, eh? He just left it on the street, right? So we got a ticket. Yeah. And it was like 20 bucks, right? But, well, you left the flashers going. Okay, the, w the worst part of these places, though, is like one night, eh, I went out there. They got the worst service in the world. And I sat in that place for like two and a half hours. And no one waited on me, eh? And I thought, You're supposed geez. to, you get your own donuts. You, you go up to the counter. Oh, get out, eh? <laughs> you don't know what it well, uh, oh, I, I was believe. there like I thought, oh, I, she's a mean one, eh? Where was I, there down. I was there for like from 3 a.m. till 9 a.m., eh? I was there. You were asleep that night. I was by myself. Why didn't you tell me you were going to go to the Here, have some dip. Hey, don't, eh? Anyway, that's our show. Good day. I asked you to tell me whenever you were. I'm Floyd Robertson. And I'm Earl Cannonbear. And this is the SCTV News. Today's top story, a miraculous breakthrough in pharmaceutical drugs may not only eliminate death, 
but rejuvenate all old people. Scientists at the University of Southern California at Berkeley claim that death is actually programmed into the DNA chain. And a remarkable new drug they've developed not only eliminates death, but reverses the aging process. Now, spokesmen from the FDA claim that once this drug is tested and approved, it promises to be the biggest breakthrough in the history of mankind. Earl? <laughs> a Mellonville man was arrested by police yesterday for outstanding parking tickets. <laughs> Sorry, that's parking ticket. The warrant issued by police charged Thomas Wilkes with $9 in fines or one day in jail. Wilkes paid the fine to avoid spending the night in jail. <laughs> Elsewhere in the news, a new planet Excuse was... Excuse me, boys. I hope I'm not interrupting it. Well, we were doing a newscast. Uh... Oh, for drunk. I... That's right. It really is me. <laughs> I've been a big fan of yours for many years, Mr. Cronkite. I've watched you on You Were There in the CBS News, and I'm a big booster of yours. I... Earl Cannon Bear, Mr. Cronkite. <laughs> I know who you are, Cannon Bear. Floyd? I just want to take this opportunity to congratulate you on doing a fine job. Well, thank you, Mr. Cronkite. Uh, coming from an award-winning journalist like yourself, that's quite a compliment. Can I get an autograph, Mr. Cronkite? Uh, for my kids, because they've been watching you too. That's Stop. my news item. Give me that. Not for me. But... The amazing thing, Floyd, is that you had to do it by yourself all these years. I'll give you a second handshake and vote of confidence yeah. on that. It hasn't been easy, that's for sure. <laughs> Well, fortunately for Floyd, uh, he's had me to anchor the show here, so I sit right there, Mr. Crockett. That's where I read my <coughs> items, so... Is that right? Well, <laughs> frankly, Cannon Bear, I think you ought to stick to cheese. Leave news broadcasting to those that know how to do it. Right, Floyd? <laughs> Very funny. Well, Mr. Cronkite, would you care to uh, read the news with me? Oh, well, I'd be honored. You can sit right here, Mr. Cronkite. That's... Oh. That's where I sit. <clears throat> and uh, I'll just share some of Floyd's items here. No, you won't. <laughs> You're not going to share any. Well, I'd be honored then, Mr. Cronkite, if I could read some items with you, because... Absolutely not. Uh, I work alone. Go on, get up. Stand over there and watch how it's done. Go on, over there. Go on, get up. Go on. <laughs> <clears throat> well, uh... Continuing in the news... A new planet was discovered last week by scientists at Mount Palomar Observatory. Now, this planet moving in an orbit coincidental with Jupiter has shifted three degrees laterally, causing an increased rain along latitude 30, changing the Sahara Desert into a fertile oasis. Walter? Oh, that's quite a story there, Floyd. <clears throat> an argument broke out at City Hall in... Mellonville yesterday over the no smoking. <laughs> Mayor Tommy Shanks interceded and modified the law so that one third of the room would be designated as a smoking area in accordance with the corresponding number of smokers. <laughs> Point? Designated smoking area. That's right. Elsewhere in the news, scientific proof verifying the existence of God may uh, soon be at uh, hand. Uh, excuse yes, me for a moment here. Uh, I can't help but notice that you get all the big, big news items and I get those chintzy little local news items. Well, we write our own news items and you're reading Earl's, Mr. Cronkite. Cannon Bear's responsible for this? That's yeah. right, Mr. Cronkite. Uh, I write all my own copy and <clears throat> I have an office. Just, uh, Nothing to right. boast about or take credit for. Go on, get out. Get out and watch. You just have to live with these as they are. <clears throat> Horrible item. Continuing in the news, scientific proof verifying the existence of God may oh, soon be at hand. Uh, Floyd, now, uh, sorry to interrupt, but I have here a, an important bulletin that was just handed to me. I'd like to interrupt to read it. Ladies and gentlemen, this just in. Three women were killed and 17 injured when a washing machine blew up on the final spin-dry cycle at the Easy Wash laundromat. Wait a minute. What a you, SWAT team what are you assisted talking about? in the investigation and bomb demolition experts Wait a minute. Un Hold on, you're making it Professional <laughs> newscaster, Floyd. I don't make things up. Oh, well, there was no news bullet in there. You made it up. You were lying. You're worse than Earl. <laughs> well, 
You hurt my feelings. Never oh, mind that. For SCTV, this is Floyd Robertson saying, and that's the news. Great job, Mr. Crockett. Boy, you really make Get it. off me! Just because I screwed up doesn't mean you take any credit, Earl. You're still the worst newscaster in broadcasting today. Good day to you. <clears throat> Obviously, uh, a bitter man, Floyd. Uh, losing the CBS News and uh, retiring. He's getting old. Bitter. Bitter. <laughs> but he did talk to me, so I was over there. Yes, he yeah. did. <laughs> well, you know, he's right about one thing, though. What's that, Floyd? You are the worst. <laughs> well, that's the way it is. I'm Earl Cannonbear. Good night. Can I get another espresso? I gotta be alert tonight. Oh, in a heist, huh? If this is such a foolproof plan, how come somebody else hasn't tried to pull this off? Identify yourself. We're with the Red Skeleton Show. We're just going to Mr. Thomas's dressing room to pick up a few props. Right. <laughs> right. Used to the perfect heist. Mod Lens 11. Don't miss it. Welcome to the mating game, where today's lucky girl gets an all-expense-paid dream date with a bachelor of her choice. But first, the queen of the mating game, Edith Prickly. How's it, Hank? <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome to mating game. I'm Edith Prickly. I guess you know. Just got back from chaperoning last night's couple. We were in Newark drinking pina coladas till four in the morning. Well, at least I was. Teddy's dream date took a dive at 10.30 when Teresa brought up her biscuits all over a chiffon. <laughs> well, I took care of Teddy. Made him a happier man than she ever said, if you know what I mean. He's still in the motel room, probably grinning from ear to ear like I left him. Anyway, I had to fly back for tonight's show, so let's meet our bachelors tonight. Bachelor number one hails from Scotland. His favorite sports are highland dancing, tossing the caber, playing the bagpipes. He's 46 years old and works for SCTV right here in the station. Let's meet Angus Croft. <laughs> Well, don't just sit there like a dummy, Croc. Say hello or something. Don't badger me, you old cow. I don't have to do anything. I'm fulfilling my contract just by sitting here. No points for geniality. <laughs> All right, bachelor number two is a chef, and he loves bocce ball, oregano, and considers himself a professional girl watcher. Hey! <laughs> He's 38-year-old SDTV star Marcello Sebastiano. <laughs> Welcome, Savano. Uh, Chupello. Uh, Marcello. <laughs> They're all the same to me. Anyway, what the hell, Marcello? I got it out of my card, but I don't know what the hell it means. What is oregano? Oregano. It's like uh, origami, eh? It's uh, the ancient Italian art of a pizza folding. Uh. No kidding. <laughs> Sorry, I asked. <laughs> anyway, let's move on to bachelor number three. He's junior rabbi at the Bene Hanna Synagogue. His hobbies are performing circumcision. <laughs> Visiting sick people and recommending good places to eat. He's 23-year-old Rabbi Yitzhak Karloff. Rabbi, I may be throwing you a curveball, but what the hell, I am the hostess, I'm gonna ask you. What's a good place for a sick person to eat in? And do I have to get dressed up? Well, that's an interesting uh, question, Mrs. Prickley, and not one that I can answer readily without a smattering of research, you know. Is that right? Well, Carla, we don't have all day. <laughs> you, you like ribs? Well, I like a good laugh like everybody else. <laughs> I crack myself up. <laughs> anyway, let's bring on the lovely lady today. She's a winner. Here she is. Let's welcome her. <laughs> Kenneth, there's two of us coming home tonight. Oh. <laughs> Look at the card, beats looking at you. Well, that's not very nice. Between both of us, dear, have you ever considered a facelift? Well, I tried, but my Derek broke. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. I do the jokes around here, all right? All right. Bachelors, say hello to... What the hell's your name there? Luella. Luella. Luella Lobango? Well, all right, bachelor number one, let's say hello to Luella Lobango. 
Say hi to it yourself, you old cow. I'm not getting paid for this. Bachelor number two? Hey, sounds like a sexy girl. Hello, Luella Bongo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mooey missy mo. <laughs> Bachelor number three. Uh, Labango, a lovely name. You know, Llewellyn, uh, often uh, genealogy and family trees can tell us a lot about our heritage. And in a in uh, the case... Put a bun in it, would you, Carl? Off, we haven't got all day. Uh, all right, everybody. And Luella, we've got 30 seconds. Sit down, ask some good questions. I'm just going to busy myself with some knitting. That's your number one. If you and I were in a restaurant, and I was eating a big piece of ham, and all of a sudden I started to choke on a big piece of fat, what would you do to save me? Well, it would serve you right if you died, you big fat hog. You're obviously a glutton. If I wanted to go out with a pig, I'd go out with Edith Prickly. <laughs> hey, watch it, Croc. Bonus time is coming up, and a haggis head like you could be replaced. Oh, uh, sorry, uh, Edith. You've appealed to my reason here. Uh, first, I'd try the Heinlein method, and if that didn't work, uh, I'd uh, whip out my St. John's ambulance plan. Oh, a doctor! <laughs> Hey, easy with the bachelor. My wife is going to be watching. Oh, this is exciting. Well, it's not keeping me awake. Don't fall for that marriage stuff, honey. He'd fall for anybody that hadn't been sandblasted recently. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Um, bachelor number two, if we were shipwrecked on a desert island with Jim Backus and Bob Denver, who would you make mad passionate love to? <laughs> Hard to question, hard to question. That the gym bike, he's got lots of money, you know, that uh, Bob Denver, he's a really cute guy. And I think I would like to spend it with you, baby. <laughs> huh? All right, bachelor number three. If I was an internal combustion engine and you wanted to make love to me, would you change the seal on my valve, remove the head and oil my lifters, or realign my timing tape? <laughs> Well, and I'm sorry, I'm Jewish, and I don't know anything about cars. Well, time's up. I'm out of yarn, and you're obviously out of questions. So, who's the lucky guy going to be, Luella? Bachelor number one, bachelor number two, or bachelor number three? Well, I can't love a man who doesn't know anything about cars. Uh, but I was going to pick number three, because he's Jewish. And, uh, well, number two, he'd probably be really good, like, on a weekend or something. But I know he dropped me like a hot rat cap on a summer's day. Yeah. So, even though he was real hostile to me and everything, I think I'll go with number one. <laughs> number one? Did you hear that? It's bachelor number one! <laughs> the hell does he need a police escort? All right, dear. Let's have a second choice. Hurry up now. Looks like the deck of the Titanic over there. Who's left? Carlo. By the sounds of things, I uh, expected a lot worse. <laughs> Carlos, Luella, give your dream girl a kiss. <laughs> All right, now. Come on. There you go. Dropping into your bag. Get set for a hike and trail adventure as you climb to the peak of Mount Parnell. And dine at Parnell Roberts Papa John Restaurant, where you not only get surf and turf, but two kinds of potatoes and all for just $1.49. You'll spend the night at Parnell Roberts Hotel, where you not only get surf and turf, but two kinds of potatoes. Yours to enjoy from the mating game. <laughs> well, come on, let's hurry up. I'll be back for the show tomorrow. No hanky-panky on the bus trip on the way up. I don't want to be distracted either. Come on. Your hands off there, you dirty little rabbi. <laughs> Stay tuned for Statewide News with Christopher Lydon and Gail Harris, next on Channel 57. <laughs>